Welcome back to the 21 Convention 2019 of Warsaw, Poland. Our next speaker is the man who wrote the book on day game. I call him day game's master, or the master of day game of London. He's a good new friend of the convention. This will be his first time speaking. I'm very excited to have him on our stage. Without further ado, please help me welcome Nick Krauser to the 21 Convention stage. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good guess. All right, lads. So, um, I'm going to talk about day game. That's my topic. Day game, namely chasing skirt in the street, the mall, cafe, wherever, usually the street, when the sun is up usually. And uh, it's going to be quite a technical talk. Um, I'm going to work through what is known as the London day game model, which I co-created. It's named that because it was a bunch of skirt chasers in London, running around chasing skirt, and we were trying to figure out how do you pick up women during the day, and this is what we came up with. So, you might think, why me, why day game? Well, I'm so glad you asked. So, why me? Um, I've been doing day game for about 10 years, um, obsessively so for the first eight years of that. I've spoken to a lot of women. Uh, I banged a lot of hot women, some not so hot. You know, I've, uh, I've been around, I think I've got a good handle on this process and I've done a lot of coaching to explain it. I wrote a couple of books on it. The main one, Dig in Mastery, big, thick, massive tome on all the ins and outs of this, but don't worry, we're not gonna go into that level of detail. I just wanna give you an overview of how we like to chase skirt during the day this model, and if that takes you fancy, well, have at it. The materials are there, the girls are out there in the street, go chase them. So how about why would you choose to do day game? Well, day game is not the only way to get laid, of course. People have been getting laid for a very long time. Um, more than one way to skin a cat. And day game's gonna appeal to people who have certain priorities, certain personality types. And if you think it's for you, well, go for it. But I'm not kind of day game jihadi. I'm not like, this is the best way to get laid. This is the only way to get laid. This is where you get the best women. It's not like that. Um, what I like about day game, I'm deeply introverted. Very, very introverted. So to me, a nightclub is hell. Right? To me, I think of a nightclub, and I'm thinking, well, it's some sweaty basement somewhere playing some god-awful dance music full of brain jackasses who are drunk. And for my personality type, I just don't like that. What I do like is I like walking around. I like walking around in my thoughts, taking in the atmosphere in the sunshine. That pleases me, so day game's good for that. If you're that way inclined, it might work for you. Um, day game is also good for people who like to talk because if you're chatting to a girl for five, 10 minutes on the street, it's just you and her, one on one, you can get a very deep, thick, emotional bandwidth there. You can get a lot of connection. So if that appeals to you, again, digging might be your thing. Um, and another reason why you might like it is it's a healthy way to chase skirt. You do it sober, you do it in the daytime. I like to think of it this way, there's, um, those of you who've read your history, or are considerably older than I am, will know that Victorian England, the cities, you know, London, Birmingham, and so on, were smog-ridden, incredibly polluted cesspits. Very unhealthy places. So there used to be a thing where middle-class people would go to the doctor, suffering from various ailments, and the doctor would say to them, look, you're not actually sick. There's nothing actually wrong with you except you're living in London. 
right? That's the problem. So the prescription used to be to go to a seaside resort, like Torquay, Blackpool, South End, places like this. The English coastline where the air's clear, the sky's blue, the grass is green, and you can walk around in a very chilled atmosphere, taken in the air. And that is what you're doing when you do day game. Good day gamers who've been doing it a lot are very healthy people because they're walking around, you know, a lot of hours a day, very mindful of their posture as they do so. They're getting a lot of the, whatever the vitamin is you get from the sun, drinking a lot of water, you're getting a good night's sleep. You don't have to go out clubbing on a Friday or Saturday night to find girls. You're not getting the music in your ear, giving you tinnitus. So it's quite healthy. I mean, psychologically, it can be a bit dangerous in certain ways. Maybe we'll go into that sometime. But it's very good for you physically. Um, yeah, I think that's enough preamble on why day game. I mean, you'll, if you do it, you'll, you'll get a feel for if it's for you. It's also very good for your masculinity. So cold approach pickup generally is um, thinking what Richard was saying in his earlier talk about taking control of your life, about intent, about um, forcing yourself to go out and do things, which might be difficult. And day game is hard. It's very hard, but what it is, is it's you saying, look, you know what? I'm not going to sit on my ass, right swipe and Tinder. Is it right swipe or left swipe? I don't know. I never use it. But you're not just swiping Tinder and hoping for girls to come to you. What you're saying is, right, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to put myself in the mix. I'm going to walk around, keep my eyes open for girls I like the look of. And if I like one, I'm going to go up and tell her. In a rather more complex way than just tell her. But you're going to tell her. You're going to convey your intent. You're not hiding it. You're not leaning back, too cool for school, pretending you don't fancy her. You're going right up and in a more nuanced way, you're basically saying, look, I like you, I'm pursuing you. And that feels good. It feels very good when you do it. It can be very stressful, but you get into it and it become very addictive, feels very manly. And also because day game is very difficult because you're doing it very sober and you're trying to engineer interesting, seductive conversations from zero with someone you've literally just seen, it's also going to test your problem solving, it's going to test your wits, it's going to work on your charisma. You're going to get a lot of rejection, which you've then got to get back up after. So it's also, in a way, it's kind of like the furnace that strengthens the steel. So again, good day gamers tend to come across as quite strong characters psychologically. So anyway, enough preamble on why. Let's talk about expectations, if you decide to do it. Well. I don't mean to disillusion you, but you're not going to be banging a load of supermodels. Sorry, that's POA marketing bullshit. It doesn't actually happen. And in the unlikely event that you are able to bang a load of supermodels based on tally on your personal charisma, I'll be emailing you for coaching. So what can you reasonably expect? Well, ignore the marketing bullshit, right? It's not a magic bullet. It's not one simple trick. It's not, I was this abject loser virgin and now, um, drowning knee deep in top tier pussy. That's not gonna happen. But what will happen is very, very beneficial for your life if you're ambitious and you put yourself to it. So what is a reasonable expectation? It's kind of like how long is a piece of string? And it's all based on your SMV, your sexual market value. Everything is adjusted to that. So if your SMV is high, you're gonna do better because game is like a value add, allows you to deliver your SMV effectively in a short period of time. So one way to do it would be to think of your own sexual history and think, okay, what's the hottest bird you've banged in the last five years? Right, forget that, it was an outlier. What was the second hottest bird you banged in the last five years? That sort of girl, you can probably, if you commit to this, you'll probably either get a lot more girls of that caliber or you'll get a reasonable number of girls of say a point or two hotter than that. That's a reasonable expectation, although not in the beginning because it's a formidable learning curve. What might be another way of looking at it? Um, well, the difficulty depends on your ambition. I was rather obsessive. I must have spoken to between seven and 10,000 girls over the last 10 years. It is possible to you know, just dabble, spend talk to a couple of hundred girls, get you an idea of what you want, and then you know, you're just looking for a girlfriend, say, or You've got your projects that you're doing and you just every now and then you go out for a couple of hours, talk to girls, okay. You know, again, you're not gonna be bang supermodels, but it can markedly improve your life. 
So that is what it can give you. But um, let's see. Because there's no magic, it's SMV. This talk's going to be technical, and I don't want to give you the wrong impression. I'm not saying, learn this, everything's great, right? There's been a lot of other talks you've had, a lot of things you've read, which are things like improve your SMV, right? Go to the gym, eat right, change your aesthetic, read a lot of books, straighten out the inner game kinks in your own psychology based on whatever's gone on in your past, right? I absolutely recommend you do all of those things because they're going to raise your SMV, make you a more charming, charismatic person. And then when you hit the streets and you start doing this stuff, we're going to find a way of delivering that value. Right? You're not bamboozling the girl. You're not tricking the girl. She knows exactly what you're up to. Why we've got this model is it's a very structured way of starting from zero and getting five, ten minutes in, and you've been able to deliver a lot of the value that you have, show the girl a lot about you in multiple facets. You've learned something about that girl, create a nice little energy, and then at the end you find out if it's going to go somewhere. Right, so I often like to think of it as a value delivery mechanism. It's quite an efficient way to do so. So... And another way to think of it is like poker, playing a game of poker. You know, TV poker, No Limit Texas Hold'em, is the skill is in playing your cards correctly, but you never really get to choose the cards you get. So I think of it when you're walking around meeting girls on the street, think of that as being dealt your two whole cards in a Texas Hold'em game, right? You go up to the girl, you don't know much about her. She could be really into your type of guy. She could be available or she could be not into you. She could be unavailable. You don't know that necessarily until you go up and talk to her. I mean, there's hints, we can go into it. But you're going to get cards. You're going to talk to a girl. And then, depending on how that interaction goes, you're going to think, you know what? I'm going to put more into this. I'm going to see how it goes. That's a little bit like waiting for the flop. You find out more. And then you play that hand and you might think, you know what, this isn't working, this isn't the right type of girl, or she's not into me, or something, I'm going to fold. And in day game, you're going to fold most of your hands, just like you do in bar game and night game. Most girls you talk to want no, for various reasons. Don't like you, not available, whatever it is. So you fold those hands. But that doesn't matter, because what good poker players do is they manage their chip stack, which in this case is your emotional energy. And you're waiting for the right hand that you play well, so you win everything. So the payoff structure of day game, if you're a player, you don't have to be a player, but if you're a player, you're not just looking for a girlfriend, is loss, 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 massive win, loss, 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 massive win. That's the payoff, right? You're not going to get every girl, not even anywhere close. Right? So. so that's a little bit of a preamble on what to expect. So let's go into the model itself. The purpose of the model is to give you a structured interaction where you can practice each element, get better at it, learn to see what the girl's giving back to you, learn to more effectively convey who you are in an attractive manner. And there's a direction. Right? An analogy I like to use, especially when I'm watching some of the really god awful infields on YouTube, is imagine like one guy going up to a girl and talking is not game. It's not pickup. It can be a nice chat. It might even go somewhere, but, there's a, but it doesn't mean any game is taking place. Game is a process. Just like putting on a pair of swimming trunks, jumping in the deep end of the pool and flailing your arms around is not swimming. It's drowning, right? It might look a little bit like swimming, but it's not going anywhere. Swimming is a skill set. And you can learn it. Game is an art. It's a bit like, say, in boxing, right? Like, coaches don't say to their boxer, just go and fucking hit him until he falls over, right? It's not purely about mindset. There's a technical skill. There's jabs, crosses, bobs, weaves. There's a technical skill, and so it is with the game. So. All right, then. So let's talk about the model. It's very simple. There's only five stages to remember. Open, stack, vibe, investment, close. We'll get into what spikes are in a minute. All right. Open is beginning an encounter, beginning a conversation. Takes anywhere between half a second to 10 seconds, very fast. I'm gonna go all these in more detail in a minute, I'm just giving you the overview. Stack, that's the next thing. It is a bridge to a conversation. It's the bit where you create the conversation out of nothing. So you've stopped the girl, you have her attention, she's got an inkling of why you're talking to her. You now have to build a conversation, find a topic, we call that stacking. 
Otherwise, you just open, maybe give her a compliment, she's, okay, thank you, and walks off. You have to indicate we're going into a conversation, you have to carry a lot of the work here to make the conversation happen. Okay, next, vibe, vibing. What this is, is what normal people would call flirting. It's a light-hearted, playful exchange of energy for the teasing and challenging, having fun where nothing's taken at face value, and you're just easing into talking to each other. Typically, goes on between one minute and three minutes. Then you move into an investment stage. Investment is actually getting to know each other. Telling her about you, finding out about her. And this time, it is at face value. You actually say what you mean. So that's the investment stage. And then finally, you'll come to the point, five, 10 minutes in, maybe even 20 minutes in, where you think, right, I've ticked all the check boxes. I've conveyed who I am, what I want. She's given me that back. I think this is working. And then you go for the close, which usually is just you take a number, but depending on the situation, you might say, you know what, Look, why, why are we talking here on the street? There's a cafe over there. Let's go have a coffee right now, right? Instant date. So this talks to me about just that process, not the texting, not the dating, not the escalation afterwards. So now, before the open, you get what you might call pre-approach. Tree approach is everything you do from deciding to go out to hit on the girl to actually find a girl an opening. So I want to say a few words about that. So if you ever walk down the street and look around at the people, you'll notice that most people are not conscious of how they're presenting themselves to the public, right? They're too busy. They've just got off the metro. They've got to pop into a shop, buy, you know, pot of pasta and get home, they think of what they're going to watch on Netflix, whatever. They are not conscious of how they're presenting themselves to the world around. And they don't need to be. You know, they might be happily married with kids, everything's going great. They don't need to be conscious of it. But if you are walking around chasing skirt, you have to be conscious of it. Because just as you're walking around, you know, you see a hot bit of flange go past and you're like, ooh, fucking hell, right? You want girls to be noticing you positively before you've even spoken to them. So how do you do that? First thing you have to do is you have to adjust your metronome. So you know metronome, right, beats per minute? What you'll find is most people, their metronome, which um, times their body gestures, their vocal tone and everything, moves quite fast. And the more stressed you are, the faster it's gonna go. I'm probably talking faster right now than I normally do, because this is my first time on stage for the 21 convention, right? It's a little bit of a pressure situation. And day games are a very high pressure situation. But if you think of like cool people, you know, if you think of Clint Eastwood man with no name, right, you think of the of Tyler Durden from Fight Club, you think of the coolest guys in Hollywood, the characters, they move slowly, they talk slowly, they're laconic. If you think of like the coolest animals, like lions, tigers, they're slow, they're laconic. Right, little chihuahuas are yappy little yappy and they move fast, right? Lions don't until they kill. So generally speaking, slower, more laconic is cool. So what you often want to do when you're day gaming is you want to slow your metronome down so that all of your behaviors slow down. So the first way you do that is you just